Shannon Griffith joins us now. From Hoosier Tailgate, we'll talk talking about this week. Indiana had the uh, Indiana football had pro day. Uh, I was out there, Shannon, and in the break we were jokingly talking about something, and uh, you mentioned <laughs> Indiana's expected starting quarterback. Yeah, Curtis Curtis, so, Curtis. Rourke. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, and I was on the sideline, and someone said, "Oh, there's uh, Rourke," and uh, uh, because generally you you obviously you have to have quarterbacks to throw to the receivers, right? And there was actually receivers there from outside of IU, some guys from Wabash. Wabash's quarterback was there, who God just didn't treat him quite kindly enough to give him enough height because he's got a little laser uh, on his shoulder, a uh, rocket little rocket thrower. Look, look good, but the funny anyway. Getting back to someone was so there's Rourke, and I'm like, okay, where? Because we're on the sideline looking out there into this group of players, and and they finally describe him enough, and I'm and I'm like, you mean that big tight end looking sob? Uh, he's kind of a big boy. Uh, yeah. got some size. He, he uh, I guess you'd have to go back to uh, uh, Nate Sudfeld, uh, for Indiana for a guy that that has mm-hmm. the build. Uh, at quarterback for Indiana, but yeah, he's uh size experience, not a, not a bad combination. Yeah. He's probably a little thicker too than <clears throat> what Nate was back in the day, yeah. but um, you know, he's, you know, every bit of that six, five, six, six stature, about 230 pounds. Um, you know, the video that I saw, um, him throwing it around a little bit, you can see his ability to throw the high touch ball, and in in times where he, you know, through the the the, the true line shots that you know showed his strength of his arm. And there's a reason why he was a Mac player a year, a couple of years ago, and you saw it. Now he's, you know, I think he's battled a little bit of the weight issue because he was coming off of a maybe had some type of surgery or something that he was nursing when he came in. And you can see that he's gotten himself back into a little bit more better playing weight. Um, But you can see why he also fit that mold that uh, coach Signetti talked about what made him take a guy like Curtis Rourke. And that's because he had a body of work and he's played the position. And those are the things that gives him the edge to a degree uh, going into camp, but um, you're going to see Tyler Cherry, Cherry to get a good look this spring to see where he's at in his development, what he brings to the table. Um, I think you're going to get Taven to get his um, opportunity to, you know, show what he can do. Um, but uh, definitely a talented room uh, heading into the spring. Oh, without question, without question. And most importantly, options. Indiana mm-hmm. has options. And I'm not talking about just its starter, um, although you do because you mentioned a, a room of guys that while we were expecting Rourke to be the guy just because of all the, the thing, the experience and all that to go into it, he, he didn't come here to, to sit. Uh, mm-hmm. which I know people say that about other guys, but this is a different situation. But um, not only do you have options, but you have options and you have guys that options to groom. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that is the year two thing. You're already, Indiana is in a position already that they are generally or haven't been in quite some time. And that is, Working on the following season of quarterback already during the current season. Mm -hmm. That has not been the case for such a long time. And that that's how you get ahead of the game. And as hard as it is, hard as the game is to get ahead of now with in this day and age of college athletics. Again, I've got to give credit to Kurt Signetti and, and, and the and the staff for being in that position right now. Yeah. And they've, you know, <clears throat> you got Alberto Mendoza. He'll be coming to campus, you know, in the fall. Um, 
don't forget about what Brock Lowry may or may not show this spring and determine what he may, his future may look like. It's one of those things that um, you've got to have the depth at that position out of any position there is on your roster, just because it's a position in today's game can be riddled with injury. And you're a guy that could be a play away or two plays away from being the starting quarterback. So having the depth on having, you know, those guys in place to compete, they should come out a spring with a pretty good idea what they have and who that guy is going to be moving forward. Um, and they're going to have to do some things probably – you know, the thing that concerns me, I don't know if it concerns me as much as it's a double-edged sword, is this double transfer rule is still in effect. And you can come out of spring, and you're going to have some guys that are going to leave. Um, and when you look at that, you look at it from the positions of skill. And that can mean wide receiver room. That could be the quarterback room. You know, all of a sudden, you, you're feeling good, and then they find out they're not going to be the guy. And next thing you know, two of them hop in the portal and they're gone now. Um, but I do think you, you're correct. Uh, Indiana has the opportunity to not only work on the here and now, but into the future, uh, something that they haven't done or haven't been, haven't been able to really do in years past. Yeah. And uh, that does a lot more, not just for player development, right? but for, te- but for team development. You're, no you're kind of it's it just exponentially uh, grows itself out as not only you you're growing uh, the positions uh, the, from the most position down, of course, at quarterback, but it, it, the team chemistry, team development. Uh, again, none of this stuff have we seen in the last several years. It's been a it's like starting over. Yeah, I don't want to say starting over every year, but it's been kind of close to that and every time that they started over it was like a step forward and two steps back Mm -hmm. well this is like taking three four steps forward one step back Mm -hmm. uh which is fine because that means you're still three steps ahead (laughs) right you were well you look at the difference between what indiana has had in the quarterback room and what you just spoke about to what a team like Ohio State has in the quarterback room where they've got, you know, oodles of talent that's buried on the depth chart. Those guys never leave. Very seldom do you see a guy from Ohio State leave um, unless, you know, it's just so stacked against him there's no way to see his way on the field. But that's why they have a great year in, year out because of the ability to what you said, Jim, was to develop that continuity in the program, to develop that team development with the younger guys down the roster. Um, You know, they stick in the program, they bide their time, and when it comes to their opportunity, they're ready to go, as are the guys that have been around them for two to three years. So Indiana, in that respect, never has been able to really get to that point. And that's the depth issue that they've always kind of been a hindrance to them. Um, And now I do think there's an opportunity to start growing that aspect of the program um, with Coach Signetti and some of the rule changes that have also aided to a certain degree in that regard uh, development part. But uh, yes, they're in a better position than they have been in the past. They've got, a talented room that is going to be fun to watch as it comes out of the you know the spring ball, as are other positions on the team that have that competitive balance in the room. Absolutely, uh, and that is nothing but good news for Indiana. It to, continues to go along with, uh, like I said, that how the uh, schedule is set up. Uh, just. The, Going into spring, and this is going to be interesting to watch this kind of now you got to bring it all together. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you've been in this position before as a coach, so you, you've got to go from spring to fall, and you've got a lot to do in a short period of time because, in essence, you've got 
it's a brand new team, which mm-hmm. there are tons of the same pieces. Don't get me wrong. But offense, totally different. Defense, totally Ooh. different. Staff, totally different. Yeah. Uh, a third of the players, totally different. So this is a whole new deal. And yeah. so you have got to implement all of that, implement the players together, uh, implement the staff and the players together. There's a lot to get done for this program. Yeah, and that's why this spring is so critical uh, on many fronts, some seen, some unseen, when it comes to establishing what the bar is. Um that's going to be the big focal point for uh, Coach Signetti as, you know, you've heard him talk about what he expects. He wants fast, physical, and relentless. And that that mindset is going to be, you know, imprinted on every position that there is. So it's a how do we practice? How do we do things? All those things, as well as evaluation of talent and players, um, is going to take place this spring. And ultimately, you know, when it comes down to it as an assistant coach or a position coach, you know, these guys are going to grade every practice. They're going to grade every drill. They're going to create a dossier on about every player in their position group. So at the end of the spring, uh, at, at the end of spring, they're able to have true, hard, honest questions with not only the players that are in that room, but the head coach, when he asks a question about so and so, and he needs to know what you know, what the ins and outs are about a particular player. So, uh, very critical spring for Indiana. Uh, not trying to be cl- cliche ish there, because I don't think you ever hear a coach talk about the, uh, you know, the non importance of spring football. But in this situation, highly, highly, highly important for a lot of things to be put together implemented and then a course set for next fall as they come back and you know in august to get things rolling for the season and uh as brian points out indiana with five quarterbacks on the roster right now gotta you gotta set the hierarchy next the i and again assuming rourke is the, the the top is qb1 well those next four slots where they fall in i i'm that's what's going to be interesting to see for me. I do not think that um, Jackson, David Jackson is going to be the number two guy. Yeah, I mean, not. I mean, you know, Tyler, Tyler Cherry or, you know, somebody that, you know, Alberto Mendoza coming in as the true freshman comes in and, you know, wows them during the fall camp. Um, you know, that's what the competition's for in the spring. Um Will they, you know, I, I, I doubt if Coach Signetti makes a true indication on who is the guy uh, at the conclusion of spring, uh, you know, outwardly. Now, inwardly, I think that will be communicated in saying this is our guy. But um, you're, you may be right. Taven Jackson may not be number two. Um, who knows? Um, or I may be crazy. <laughs> yeah. But it the other thing. a lunatic I'm looking for. <laughs> you're on point today um the biggest thing the biggest the biggest thing with Taven is there's a kid that has a lot of talent I'm anxious to see what Tino can do with him and developing him because there's a lot of tangibles that uh, Taven does have and if they can corral it and part of it's between his ears then you may see him blossom into somebody that we we never thought would be that way. 